this dude. I'm a traditional liberal, which makes me a right-wing fascist. I want a guy up in the cockpit with, sorry, pit up there, you know, <laughs> purple hair and an outside up there, you know. For some women, their vaginas are a little on the beefy side. That's a feminine penis. <laughs> Give me that thing. Ah! Ah! The painfully unfunny Rob Schneider. I want to be a horsey. I want to be a wizard. I want to be a girl. My pronouns are he and ha. He made the usual pivot we see when comedians are on the downslope. So it goes L, G, B, and then T. Skip the T's. Don't need that headache. <laughs> I, I'm so nervous, I don't even feel comfortable talking about trans fats. Yeah, you're right, the trans. If you want to go from a mono to a polyunsaturated, that is your journey and I support it. <laughs> Look what they did to Chappelle. You cross the T's, they will dot your eye. Feel me? So, this happened. Breaking news into first take, NBA Global Ambassador and Naismith Basketball Hall of Famer Dikembe Mutombo has passed away today at the age of 58 from brain cancer. He was surrounded by his family. And the tributes would pour in. Just heard the news about um, I, I just heard the news about Dikembe Mutombo and um, it's, it's, it's really hard to believe, um, and yeah, it's, it's hard for us to be with that guy, without that guy. Uh, he's, you have no idea um, what Dikembe Mutombo meant to me. Wow. Toronto Raptors executive Masai Ujiri would choke up when addressing the media on the legacy of someone he was very tight with and, in addition, not only having a kinship with, but also someone he looked up to in Dikembe Mutombo. The likes of NBA Hall of Famer Urban Magic Johnson took to Twitter. Joakim Noah wrote one of the best tributes posted on his Instagram, which everyone should absolutely check out. City legend Vincent Company also weighed in. Yeah, I, I mean, my fondest memory of, of Dikembe Mutombo, he fractured my face on my birthday in Cleveland <laughs> with an elbow. I never even got an opportunity to like tell him about that, but yeah, I don't remember how old uh, I was in Cleveland my first stint. And uh, I think I was turning 22, maybe. He was in Houston. We do some of the you guys who do the research. Yeah, he was in Houston, and I went to the hole and uh, and caught one of those Dikembe elbows. If anybody know about the Dikembe elbows, they do not feel good. He fractured my face, and I went to the hospital that night, and I wore a mask for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So that is my memory of Dikembe. <laughs> and it kept going, of course. By the way, my personal favorite, and I know a lot of y'all will agree, is this. That's the fifth floor problem. Okay. Not in my house. <laughs> no, no, no. So as we remember the legacy from the cameras rolling in the locker room and trainer's rooms, the smack talking sessions that he and Michael Jordan had tons of finger wags, of course. Um, I remember there was a clip circulating of him on Conan O'Brien when he was doing a Mo Larry and Curly impression, the Three Stooges, and Conan had a balloon full of helium that Matumbo inhaled and then tried to do an impression. Like, just a charismatic, funny, great dude where there will simply never be another. As all of this was going down, Schneider had a different agenda. He would find this tweet. The world is not the same as it was yesterday. A lot of things are changing. 
the only way we can move on to be healthy is by being vaccinated. We need to help each other, make sure each one of us understands the importance of vaccine so we can live in a better community. We need to wash our hands. We need to educate each other. And we need to wear a mask. We cannot ignore the importance of wearing a mask if we have to be there for our children. Which the late Matumbo would caption. This holiday season, stay informed from trusted sources like the WHO and get vaccinated. Only together can we be safe and defeat COVID. Now, you probably know where this is headed. And even if you do, it won't prepare you, prepare you for how loathsome of a tweet this is. So Schneider saw this, knew the wave that he was riding, and quote tweeted, rest in peace, dot, dot, dot. I'm sure this is just another coincidence. But I took a pass on the jab, capital J, and I'm going to not let anyone I know and who will listen, capital L, get it either. Let me be very clear to a despicable, bottom of the barrel, unfunny, failing up comedian like Rob Schneider. He died of brain cancer. Brain cancer. He did not die because of a vaccine that you all love to politicize for unfounded, purely idiotic reasons. He died of freaking brain cancer. And this dude sees an opportunity. That's what this is. He sees an opportunity to say, hmm, how can I try and insert myself into this story while also probably trying to promote myself in these circles so the dumbest people in our society who believe that folks are dying suddenly from getting a vaccine will support me at my shows because all I have right now is an appearance on Tucker Carlson and a comedic special, which I don't even have the numbers to, but it's on Fox Digital. This is fraudulent. It is idiotic. He has not released another statement after this because he knows. He knows this is what feeds the monster, which is the MAGA base. And he keeps doing it. He keeps doing it. It is preposterous that he would put something out like this. Just as preposterous as John Stockton making a name for himself, saying athletes are dying suddenly. Well, where's the evidence? Ah, oh, you know. It's, it's there. Not only is it disrespectful, but it's unfathomable. It should anger you that we have people like this in our society that when someone dies, they go, well, did he get the jab? Did he get the vaccine? What world are we living in? Get it, don't get it, whatever. But to say that a guy who died from brain cancer died because of the capital J jab, it's either blissful ignorance or intentionally misguided to get new fans. And I tend to think it's the latter. Let's also remember, not only are his politics awful, but so is his parenting. On a podcast, Al King, Deuce Bigelow's daughter, Detailed it in full, and let me tell you, it is bad. King said she'd often go four or five years without speaking to her father, minus the occasional set visit where if she ever messed up a shot, if I was talking, I would get in effing trouble, she said. The singer also remembered how harsh her father had been regarding her weight and her general appearance. She would say, and I quote, I had already started getting tattooed and it was like 108 degrees. So I had to wear sweaters because my dad was very anti-tattoos anti or any form of self-expression. 
And more recently, King has taken issue with his worsening conservatism in addition to his terrible stances on the LGBTQ plus community and their rights. She'd also, she says, get sent to, as she puts it, fat camp, saying, and I quote, I don't want to be associated with him, she quipped. King would notoriously change her last name. You could probably guess where this is headed. She did it when she was 18 because she did not want to have any association with the man she refuses to say by name. She tells the tale of her parents being a Vegas marriage. They met only a few days prior, got hitched. And then she took her mom's name, quote, because she raised me and I wanted to be my own person. She would go on to say this. Right now, we're not flowing, as in her and her father. I disagree with a lot of the things that he says. And he is just, I don't know. You can want someone to change so much. And ultimately, you can't control anyone else's actions. You can't control people's feelings. All you can control is how you react and what you do with your feelings. Amen. I'll end it there. If you can and are willing, please become a paid member here at TYT Sports and or go to tyt.com slash join. In addition, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Appreciate it. Have a great day.